Greetings and salutations, my esteemed subscribers and strangers. This is, of course, yours truly, Sugikan, and today I'm very pleased to review the first season of WandaVision. And for the full disclosure, there will be some minor spoilers included there and there, so in case you don't want to know anything, maybe come back later to this video after you have seen the season. Now, I will be doing a very honest review. I'm not going to be reviewing it from a perspective of a Marvel fan or a person who have seen all the MCU movies and Marvel TV shows. I'm just going to be comparing it to pretty much any other TV show that kind of fits on the same genres that WandaVision is basically portraying. And the burning question obviously for many people is which MCU movies I should basically watch first. And the most essential uh, Marvel movie is the Avengers Age of Ultron and obviously uh, the Avengers Endgame because this takes place after the Endgame and its events, which are referenced a couple of times in this series. But those would be the most key and crucial elements, especially Age of Ultron, because that is kind of like the background story of our two main cast here, Wanda Maximoff, paid by uh, Elizabeth Olsen, and Paul Bettany, who is playing Vision, which kind of get their, a lot of their background story from Age of Ultron, and they were kind of more in the back line with the other uh, Avenger movies, in my opinion, but this is more focusing on them. Now, one division, I have to say that it's bit overhyped, there's been a lot of buzz about it, I've seen a lot of adverts when I'm walking in the streets and everything. I don't think this is the golden goose of, you know, uh, Disney+. Plus. I think that Loki and, you know, The Winter Soldier are probably going to be turning out to be a lot better uh, TV shows than WandaVision. That is my personal expectation. And I also don't think it is as good as The, uh, the Mandalorian. But let's kind of get into The WandaVision, and basically. So, as I said, it takes place after the event of... Avengers Endgame, where Wanda and Vision are basically living in this sort of a suburban life in a town of Westview in New Jersey, trying to conceal their true natures, and it feels like they are inside of a sitcom of sorts, and that is kind of like the premise in here. Now, this is the thing. The first thing that has been kind of criticized, especially in the beginning of the season, that it was trying to be kind of too many things, like a Swiss army knife being a drama show, mystery show, romance show, sitcom, and a superhero show. And I think that it was kind of all over the place. I, I didn't find it particularly doing excellent on any of those categories. Like, if I would compare it to, let's say, Lost, which is obviously a very great show, but that was a series that was a great drama show, but it was also an excellent mystery show. So it handled and mastered those two aspects of genres. And I think WandaVision probably excels the most during its latter half, where it gets more into being a superhero. So I, I just fundamentally didn't really really find the mystery elements in WandaVision that great, the way they were portrayed and told. It didn't feel like I was watching a mystery series, and the comedy aspect, I just didn't really find it funny at all. It was sort of a parodying sitcoms, and I guess in that way, you shouldn't even find it funny in a way. And as a drama series, I think it was decent, probably. But I would kind of like say that the start is really weak, because I think when you do a pilot. The pilot is supposed to sell you on the show and, you know, because then the anomalies start to happen within the sitcoms and then it like skips ages from the 50s to 60s to 70s and then it becomes on color. As you know, the first episode is in black and white and also most of the actual second episode also. And the first episode didn't really establish kind of the mystery particle in this series really well and what was really going on and it just didn't leave a lot of clues and I think a lot of those clues were given out in the second episode. So the pilot was in, in my opinion incredibly weak in that sense and it just kind of like failed to 
I, maybe this first and the second episode should have been bundled up together or something like that. But I think that a lot of people were turned off or just gave up after the first episode. And some probably obviously going to be, you know, passing through like the first two episodes. And then it starts to actually get pretty good. And by good, I want to say that it's like kind of... Um, like, The One Division is fundamentally a different show from all of the, like, Netflix, uh, Marvel shows, or let's say, like, the Blade one, that really, really old one, which I'm gonna be reviewing at some point on the channel, by the way, so stay tuned for that, by subscribing! And so, I, I think that the fundamentally, it feels like a lot more like MCU movies, especially on the latter half, where a lot of the storytelling actually gets a lot better, and the villains kind of get more brushed out, and what's exactly going on in this world, and all of those things are just starting really, really good. So it has a very low and kind of boring start, I'm, I'm not gonna lie, the first two episodes didn't really sell me, but I guess they kept me interested enough, because the trailers kind of give you a bit of an idea what is exactly going on. So, you know, once you make the two first episodes, I think it gets significantly better. But, you know, what it's, its current rating on a lot of these uh, IMDb is, I think it's sitting around like 8 out of 10. And I really feel like that's a lot of the uh, the fanboys. And I'm not like having nothing against, by the way, of, you know, the, the Marvel fandom and everything else. But I do want to feel even on a Marvel scale, I wouldn't never really consider it anything above 7.5. Um, as a series, especially because of the weak beginning. And I do like that they kind of, you know, did these homages to these um, para sitcoms all, all over the years. And, okay, some of them were kind of genius and well-made, but they weren't funny. And I think sometimes when, you know, um, The Modern Family, which was parody later on, for example. I mean, Modern Family had their own parody episodes, like The Godfather one. That was really funny. The parody is always supposed to be funny, in a way, in my opinion, at least. And I just didn't find anything really particularly funny about WandaVision. It didn't really have comedians on the board writing, far as I know. Um, as for the other elements, I think the CGI was really good. I thought that they were going for a very low-budget show, and that's why it was kind of this sort of sitcom in the beginning. But towards the end, they really went ham on the CGI and started using a lot of these effects. And that's probably where most of the budget was actually used uh, later on. And I think that was really smart of them. And I think that it's going to be somewhat similar with um, Loki. I think that is going to be a mystery show as well. But I think that's going to be a bit more entertaining. And we will see. That's my prediction, obviously. And also we have the Falcon and the Winter Soldier, which I think is going to be more action-packed. So I think WandaVision is kind of probably in the mix, kind of like a you know, combination of those two. And overall, I, I did find One Division a good series. I enjoyed the latter half. Starts out slow. The actor performances from Elizabeth Olsen, Paul Bettany, and pretty much everybody else were pretty pretty dead on. Like um, also um, Catherine Hahn, you know, she's actually a comedian, and she was actually quite a funny. You know, you know, to, to kind of retract my statement from earlier, I think she had some good one-liners there and there, and, and she was kind of like one of those shining stars in this series, which really did a well, uh, great performance. Jimmy Woo also um, played by Randall Park, obviously a funny guy, and then we had Kat Dennings being Darcy Lewis, and she is obviously from Thor, and she was um, also, I guess, good. And also we had even Peters coming um, board who was playing, you know, basically Quicksilver. He was also great. But overall, I I just want to say that, you know, I think the beginning was poorly managed. And I wasn't really particularly fond of the OST here. I didn't find the soundtrack like superbly in, in interesting or great. And I think there was an opportunity missed there, like do a one theme song, which would be remixed um, on every single episode. That would have been my way to do it. But... Um, I still think WandaVision is good, but I think a lot of the uh, appeal really comes from the homages and being a Marvel fan. So somebody just coming in and watching WandaVision as a non-Marvel fan 
who hasn't seen any of the movies before, I don't think they're going to be appreciating the series as much as the fandom is. So that's why I want to want to be keeping it very real. So it wouldn't be necessarily a show I would recommend to my non-Marvel fa- uh, friends, for instance. But I can see that they ca- could kind of get into it perhaps from a, another perspective if they enjoy like some of those uh, Avengers movies which are connected. But hey, I'm definitely going to be watching another season and I'm going to be watching all the other Marvel shows coming out. And you can definitely find those reviews Reviews on this channel when the seasons are gonna be wrapping up wrapping up so make sure to subscribe and I will be seeing you guys next time on the next video cheers